Hey, what's up? It's Tacos, and today I have a um, requested tutorial by Tommy Look, uh, asking how to be able to cycle through a number of different weapons, including swords and bows, and also how to make a, um, a shield that you can toggle on, toggle off, and it will only block when it's toggled on. So, this isn't quite perfect for how I'd like it, but it works well. So, got my sword here, and it works fine. I got my shield. Oh, looks like I grabbed that, the hammer. All right, got my shield. When I press and hold B, I block. Now, the way I've done this, it doesn't block like a normal shield, which I'll see if I can fix that later, but this was the best solution I could come come to as simply as possible. And I can toggle the shield on and off all day long. And when it's off, I can't block and I can cycle through weapons. No problem. And when I'm on a sword, I shoot blue fireballs. And when I'm on my bow, I shoot arrows. So that's, that's the product. Let's get to building. This is more complex. This is, this is actually getting fairly complex by this point. I'm gonna take this character and insert a page so he no longer functions, but still is in my world in case I need a reference. And I'm gonna take this guy and delete the blank page, which kept him from functioning. So here's the guy. He's got a map and all that working from previous episodes. And the first thing that we need to do is I am going to work on the shield first and then the swords. So I'm gonna switch out the dodge for B with blocking. So this way he uh, blocks instead of dodges when there's nothing to interact nearby. So with that done, next, I'm gonna make a few lines of blank code. <clears throat> and let's see, first actually, I'm gonna show you the bit where I kinda cheat a little bit, but the way the whole de-equipping thing works, this is the easiest way I could find. I'm gonna go to attachments, add new, shield. I'm gonna grab fighter shield this time, and we're gonna put it on left forearm, assuming you want him to be right-handed. So, gotta rotate it into place. Get it kinda where you want. Make sure it's sitting against his arm so it looks like it's attached to it. That looks pretty good. All right, then we need to highlight the shield, not the character, the shield. Gonna open him up, remove that code, and then go to make a global Boolean variable. And I'll explain why I'm not doing a powering system like you normally would do in this situation, but I'm using a boolean variable, so I'll call it shield. When it is equal to true, and then let's make a couple of child lines of code. Um, we're going to make the visible equal, I'll just copy this, true. And then instead of visible, we're gonna go over to physics and make collidable true. Now we're just gonna copy and paste that bit of code, and when it's false, then all this is false. So, now the shield's visibility and collidability turns on and off when that global Boolean variable does. So now, when, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna use the D-pad for this, D-pad up and down, so when D-pad up, do global shield equals true. That's part of it. And then the reverse is down direction and false. You can always add little flashy effects here if you want to make it kind of poof in and out and it make it look nicer and have a sound and all that. I'm not gonna worry about that today, but feel free to do that. Next, we're gonna go back down. Oof, 
got a bit of code built up, to here. And right now, if I press B, it will always block. But we're going to switch this up. Now, only when global shield is equal to oh, true, only then will it allow you to block, and no other time. So let's run this by and make sure it works right. Now the reason I'm doing it this way, so I'll explain in just a second. I'm pressing B and nothing's happening. I can equip items, no problem, but I'm not blocking. But, poof, I have my shield. Eh, it'd be better with an effect. But now, I can block. And if I go make these goblins over here angry, I believe it's set to currently to withstand all damage. Come on. Yep. So it doesn't block like you would a normal shield because the game doesn't actually recognize you have a shield. We're kind of cheating the system. You're blocking as if you had no shield, but we have a shield added on more for decorational purposes. The reason we're doing this is for the weapon system, we're gonna be using the built-in equip and de-equip function. And if we use that alongside a shield, then it'd also be de-equipping the shield. And we can't can't have that. So there we go. Shields done. Now to the swords. And I'm gonna have the left and right D-pad buttons cycle through the weapons. And you can have as many weapons as you want, but I'm gonna do three. So first D-pad, right, and we're gonna make a numeric variable, and we're gonna call it weapon. And we're going to have this one incremented up by one. And we're going to copy and paste that. And then left direction, incremented down by one. Hold on just a second. My cat is asleep right next to my Xbox. And I think she might actually bump and turn my Xbox off. There we go. Don't mind that. So it increments the weapon up and down by one. So now, when the weapon is equal to one. Now there's a number of lines of code that go with each one of these. And it's a little bit cumbersome, I guess you could say, but it works very well. So first, we do started to, objects, items, unequip, to inventory. This will unequip any item you have out. And if we had the shield as a technical item, it would unequip the shield. And then, oh, be sure to put the started to, or else it will just infinitely keep equipping these items. So then we're going to equip. And despite how cool the uh, blacksmith packs are, the, sh the swords that come with all the effects, actually kind of annoying to use here. So we're gonna use more basic swords. We're gonna grab this sword first. This will be the starter sword. Equip, sh yep, no more variables. There we go. That's the basic. And for a little better flair, so that people know what you have equipped, we're gonna put a duration timer for four and a text notification of what just equipped. So. I'm gonna put sword. There we go. Now, we're gonna add another line to this later, so I'm gonna add it now. But don't freak out if this doesn't make sense. A new bolt boolean variable called bow. And bow is gonna be equal to false. Most of these weapons are not a projectile based weapon, so they're false on if they're a bow or not. There we go. So that is the basic of how to do an, a weapon template. And I'm going to add, put this on the bottom right and put a text box around it. There we go. That looks a little better. Next, I'm going to copy that and paste it twice. 
here. We're going to put this at two. It's going to unequip whatever you've got into your inventory. And then we're going to put on this fancy sword. Bow still equals false. And we're going to put this as knight sword. So, and then here's the third one. So we're going to put this one to three. Unequip to inventory. And this time, this is going to be the bow. I think the archer's bow looks cool, so we're going to grab it. And this time, the bow equals true. And we're going to display bow. There we go. That's pretty simple. Now we got a couple little lines of code left to do. And right now, when the game starts, all numeric, they default to zero. So right now, you wouldn't have anything equipped. But I want to make this cyclable. So first, I want you to start with the basic sword. So once, once, and only once in the entire game, the weapon is going to be equal to one. However, this command right here, it it won't cycle. It'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, da, da, da. So we need it to make sure that when it gets to four, it goes back to one. So when, if that doesn't make sense, just trust me, this works. So when the weapon number is greater than or equal to four. Now the important thing is this number is one number larger than your uh, last item in your inventory. So if you have 10 items, this needs to be 11. Do weapon equals one. That way, when you get to three and then you hit up on the D-pad again, the counter will go to four, but then will be instantly set back to one going through the cycle. So we're gonna copy that. And now instead of four, we're gonna do zero. And then three. So when you cycle to three, it'll cycle around. Uh, when you go to zero, it'll cycle back around to three. I hope this makes sense. It's a little bit tricky to explain. But um, this should work. Just double checking to make sure everything looks. Oh, last thing. The reason we put the bow variable in there. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Okay, so right trigger currently shoots a blue spark, which I think looks cool. But I don't want it to be shooting blue sparks when uh, I have the bow equipped. So when bow is equal to false, it'll shoot a spark neutral. Copy and paste that. But when it equals to true, no spark neutral. It'll just shoot an arrow. So... Let's hope this works. I hope you followed along with that. All right, so it looked like it defaulted my weapon to the bow, which wasn't quite what I meant, but that works. And when I fire it, arrows. And now, moment of truth. Let's cycle through. Oh, why isn't that working? Hmm. All right, something very important to learn about Project Spark. It's something I'm not going to edit out of the video is how to troubleshoot because tutorials can teach you how to do things but if you don't know how to troubleshoot then you're not going to go anywhere in project spark all right i'm back i figured out what the problem was it was something extremely minor that i missed the first time around um that can be easily fixed with just going down to these two lines of code and i forgot to switch this to less than or equal to it was still set to greater than or equal to Set that to less than or equal to. Everything works just like a charm. So, I can cycle through weapons, no problem. I can go backwards, I can go forwards, no problem at all. And it displays the text there for four seconds and it goes away. And when I'm using a bow, I shoot arrows. Which are a little bit more accurate than, eh, not really. Maybe a little more accurate than the blue fireballs. But then, switch to my sword. 
Back to blue fireballs. So. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. This is just, just the basics. You can add as many numbers as you want. You'll have to switch some of the numbers around. But, um, I hope this helps you. Tommy, what's your name who left a comment on my video? Um, if you want to see a tutorial made for your idea, leave a comment below and I will definitely do what I can to try to figure it out or send you in a way that will help you. So, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.